Hello and welcome to episode 6 in our series about building a C Sharp app to extract data from Jira. If you've been following along this series, you have seen us set up an environment, log into Jira, extract the J session ID, and, and this episode here is the climax. We actually get data, issues, work logs, comments out of Jira. I even you know, users and stuff like that. So we've already sent a, a web request when we logged into Jira, so we have most of what we need for this function already in place, like we've imported the libraries we need and we have the variables like the base URL. But there are some differences with this request. In particular, we'll need the J session ID that we extracted in the last episode to authenticate this request. We'll need the path to the API that we're calling. And then we'll need any parameters that that API requires. In this case, we'll add a start and end date for the data that we want to extract, uh, the period of time over which we want to collect issues that, ha that are new or have been updated. And we'll try sending in a few different REST API requests to look at their results. We'll probably try users and then I think the issue picker, that's a good one. But at the end of this exercise, though, uh, we will uh, code in the endpoint for the Iona FX Business Intelligence Export plugin because it will give us our data in a way that is very easy to parse, which is nice when you're doing a BI extract. There are some other advantages. Uh, you know, I'll put a slide in at the end of this video. So let's uh, let's get to the coding. So there's where we left off uh, last time. Now for this one, like I said, we have three new things we need. First of all, we're going to need a new endpoint. This isn't the login API. This will, what will we call this? We'll call this BI export API. And the path to that is get business intelligence export. It's version one and message. So that is the path which we will put on the end of, of our base URL when we call that API. And then we have some dates. And now why is this start date? On that, let's try and uh, string analysis end date. We'll just say the end of the month. So 31 December 18. So those three pieces of data we can send into our, our constructor here. And you know what, um, login API, I think I'm going to put the APIs together in my line here. So BI export API analysis start date and analysis end date. So we've set up our constructor here, or we've set up our, our call to the constructor to pass in that data. Now we need to change our constructor to accept it. So we have string, we have a new BI export URL. Um, no, it's an API. It's, it's part of a URL. I'm just calling it an API. We have a, uh, a string that is our new analysis start date and a string that is our new analysis end date. Um, we will now need some properties to hold that data before we try to set them. So we'll call this Like I said, these are in a different scope than the ones we used in the automate class up above, so they won't conflict. There we can hold the data. Now let's set the values that we receive in our constructor. Those arguments will go into our properties. BI export API. start date and date. Well, that's quite a bit of wiring that we've done there and now we can really get started on our function. Our third function. Alright, let's begin with a try catch block. inside here we're going to have the same kind of error handling code that we have in our other ones. We'll copy and paste that and then swap out the name. And then we, we also want our debug output. So that is going to happen at the very bottom of our try clause. And what are we 
be sending him over saying JSON data. Let's build the full URL that we're going to use. So that's a string. I'll just call it URL. I'm going to have this dot base URL, and to that we're going to append this dot bi export API, and then to that we're going to add a query string. This is a get request, and it's going to take start date, and that start date will be the this dot analysis start date, and we will have another parameter there. The end date and that will be this dot analysis end date and I think that is really just about it for the URL so that's our whole URL now with our URL we can now build a web request because it takes a URL as input we'll call this request it equals a web request dot create and we pass in our URL now we do want to add a cookie to this that contains our JSession ID. That's how we are uh, authenticating. But we'll add that now as a header. That's um, request has a headers object. And we will add a cookie. And that cookie's value will be named JSession ID. And it is going to equal the value of this dot JSession ID. Now that we've added that cookie to it, we can go ahead and execute it. Web response, and we'll just call it response, what I do request, response. That's going to be uh, from our request, get response. Send it out there and get us a response. Now, we need to get a stream that is returned from the server, so we use that stream object, and that's IO, we already have system.io, and we'll call it data stream, just like we did the login function, login to Jira function. From our that comes from the response and it is simply get response stream. Now like I, I said before in the login uh, to Jira uh, when we coded that function we have a stream but we what we really need is a string. For that there's this handy stream reader object that will take a stream as input and and give us a string. So stream reader we'll call it reader that is a new stream reader and into that we are passing our stream to construct it and then out of that we will use reader dot read to end to get a string out of it and we could put that into a string variable but our property is a string so let's just load up the property right there and again you know I do like to do a bit of cleanup so Reader dot clo we'll close our reader, we'll close our data stream, that can be closed up, and our response as well. I'll save that. Let's give it a test. Compile. Will you compile? Argument missing. Automate 30. Line 30. Login password, comma. There we go. Save. Now will you compile? Yes, you will. And will you run? Oh. There are login response, did our J session ID, and here are records. Data coming back from our server. Now I'm very happy with that. Uh, um, now b before we finish up this episode, though, let's test a couple other APIs because that's just one that we could use. Let's see, what if we change this URL? Oops, that's part of the URL, isn't it? Just wrapped around. If we just comment that line out, and let's try calling a different URL. We've got our this.base URL, or we'll call it different API. What if instead we want to call the user API to user? And we'll give it a username. Username Alexei. Try calling the user API. Save. Information about Alex A. 
email address, his avatar, everything we could get from Jira about him. So that's nice. That's uh, another API. Let's try something else. This time that issue picker, which I like an awful lot. This dot base URL, and onto that we will append something like to issue picker. And for this, what will our query string be? This is great because you can pass in JQL. I don't know if you use that very much. Assignee, ah, so this is a, another. So JQL equals something, and then we're going to have assignee equals um, admin. But to do that in this, we need to URI encode that. And that is percent %3D. I do this fairly often. So I know that percent %3D is the encode for an equal sign. And that will keep our server from getting confused. Let's try that. Uh, save and compile. Execute. We get issues back that um, the assignee is admin. In the next episode, we'll extend our script to co uh, convert this response into a CSV format, uh, which so many reporting and BI tools really love to consume um, and do all sorts of filtering and aggregation, things like that makes it very easy to do. So we'll do that in the next episode and I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks a lot. Bye.